Hello everybody and it's absolutely fantastic to be here. What would I like to talk about is the answer to a question that I'm often asked. Why did you leave television news to set up a digital venture? And sometimes I answer that by having a question of my own and which is to say what do you think about the quality of television news right now? Uh, I sometimes just ask this question, do you think that the quality of television news has deteriorated? in the last few years. And every time I ask that question at gatherings like this, in conferences, in meetings, in a crowd full of people, a very interesting thing has been happening for several years now. Virtually every person raises their hand and says, we think the quality of television news has deteriorated and has deteriorated sharply. So that actually sometimes leads me to a parallel question. Why is this happening? Why is the quality of TV news deteriorated? And then, what is the answer and what is the alternative? And it is the search for the answer to that question that really led me to quit TV news and to set up Editor G, but more on that a little later. Now in India, let, let's first try and understand what the problems are with all linear channels and the TV news in particular. Linear channels these days are actually all facing some sort of a crisis because everyone seems to be moving to streaming. I'm mean, Ask yourself, ask your friends, are you, how often are you watching linear television channels, which means watching something that is being beamed down to you. Most of the time you'll say entertainment, serials, movies, even sports these days are increasingly being watched on OTT platforms, on streaming, because you get choice, because you get to watch what you want, because it's a better experience. So you already have a situation where a lot of um, entertainment is now being done on streaming not news yet. And that is somewhat surprising because there's a structural problem when it comes to television news in India. And that problem originates in the business model. And let me elaborate on that for a, for a couple of minutes. You know, in many places, what happens is if you have a good quality television news channel in America and Europe and many of these other countries, what happens is that the business model essentially is I'm gonna do high quality news and I'm going to charge people subscription fees. Somebody will pay money to their cable operator or to me directly, and they will subscribe to watch that television news channel. Now in India, unfortunately, that doesn't happen. TV news channels don't get subscription money. When you're paying money to your cable operators to watch XYZ news channel, it's not that, that money is passed on to the news channel. Very little amount is very small, almost negligible. Instead, Many news channels are actually paying carriage fees to cable operators. So distribution is not a revenue source. Distribution actually is a cost. And that has its own implications. That means that television news channels are entirely dependent on advertising. That's the only way they can make their money. And advertising comes entirely from TRPs, those three letters you've heard so much about and justifiably it's, uh, uh, in a sense, the cause of most of the problems that are actually happening when it comes to TV news. And the reason for that is also that TRP has come from some 40, 50,000 boxes in the entire country. Yeah, that's right. 40, 50,000 boxes in a country of 1.4 billion people is really determining whenever you're seeing news channels saying, oh, I'm number one, I'm number one, I'm number whatever it is. That's all based on 50,000 boxes in a country of 1.4 billion people. And by now, it's been scientifically proven almost that TRPs come from shouting and screaming. It comes from tabloid contents. It comes from sensationalism. You don't get TRPs from doing serious programming necessarily or explainers or God forbid you want to do a social program. You want to talk about the rights of women or how you can encourage FDI or what should be done with water scarcity or environmental issues or save the tiger. They don't TRPs in any of that, right? TRPs come from being opinionated by being vociferous, by, dare I say it, by shouting, try and get two guests of yours to shout at each other. If one's a Hindu, one's a Muslim, that's fine. That's even better. You know, if you can get a tantric into the mix, that's even, even better. It's great. That's where, that's where the TRPs will come from. So that's the direction that TV news is fundamentally taken. And not not everyone falls prey to that. There are people who try and say, no, we will do quality journalism. And there are lots and lots of really good, really talented TV journalists who are still out there plugging away doing good quality journalism. But it, but it occurred to me many, many, many years ago that um, because of these problems, the fact that linear television in any case is, is going away at some point, and you add to that the fact that uh, 
television news in particular is going to be challenged uh, because of the TRP issue. Uh, I, it was clear that this is not where the future is going to be. So then I turned my attention to saying, okay, that means the future will be in digital video, right? Let's try and get people good quality content from digital video. Digital video news is the answer. Unfortunately, in its present form, it isn't. And the reason for that also requires a lot of analysis and a lot of debate. And I did spend almost two years trying to see why is it that digital video news is not really working? And it's very interesting that what seems to be happening with digital video news is you are ending up stumbling upon pieces of news and information. There's no organized way on digital video news to get informed. You will pick up fragments of the news from social media. Somebody will send you something on Facebook. You'll see something on WhatsApp, Instagram. I'm seeing some, some content. Okay, once in a while, I'll go to some television news website. And by the way, if you do go to a television news website to try and get information, a lot of the time, you're actually watching a live stream of that same television news channel that you already have some problems with. So clearly, that's not the solution. So basically, the problem with digital video news today is you're having to stumble upon pieces of news and information. It's not organized. And the other problem, which is an even bigger problem and an existential problem is, you start getting information only from an ideological echo chamber. And the reason for that, I'm sure all of you have seen the serial, The Social Dilemma. The reason for that is also crystal clear. The algorithms say, show this piece of news and information to X person. Why? Because this is right-leaning content and X person is right-leaning. Or this is left-wing content and this person is left-leaning. Or this person once clicked in this sort of a content, so show that person more of that content. This is what is happening. And that's why if you look at the world around you, the cleavages in society, the polarization, the sort of anger and hostility that we are seeing is getting sharpened. Because people are no longer seeing a comprehensive, broad-based, sense of, you know, what used to be there once upon a time when you used to watch the nine o'clock news or the eight o'clock news or whatever, not just in India, but around the world, you would watch a newscast and you'd get a broad sense of this is what is happening in the world around you. You would get the news and then you could make up your mind. Today, that doesn't happen, right? You're getting snippets of information. Most of it is not so much news, but views. Or if it is news, it's actually views disguised as news. You're seeing the piece of content and you think you're getting news from somebody, but actually it's got that person's biases or opinions or views inserted into the news content. And that's what you're seeing. And as a result, we are by now reaching a situation where most people don't even know what's true. They don't know what is fake and what is not fake. Look at, now, as I said, it's not just in India. Look at the United States. So many months have passed and people still don't know whether... Trump lost the election or whether the election was stolen because you can't agree on facts. If you look at what's happening in, in Ukraine right now or any other place, people don't know what the facts are. And to my mind, that's a challenge because you should tell people, this is what the facts are. This is what has happened. And then you can make up your mind. Is it good or is it bad? That's a matter of opinion. And that you as a user, as the viewers, as the audience, you're bright enough, you're intelligent enough. You should be able to make up your mind that yes, this is good or no, this is bad. But you should at least know what the facts are. And right now in digital video news, that is not entirely happening. So to cut a long story short, what is the answer and what is the solution to this? Now, when I was setting up Editor G, I actually came to the answer from a very interesting place. It was from the music industry. Yeah, it was from the music industry. And what I told myself was, was actually, it was like a Eureka moment, you know, getting up from bed one morning and saying, Eureka, music. Why music? It's because television news is like radio, right? It's like radio. You, you, can, you have to listen to what someone is telling you. You don't like it, change the channel. But fundamentally, TV news is like radio. You don't like what you're being seen, change the channel. You don't have any other option. Digital video news and information today is like cassettes and CDs. You can find the story that you want, but you've got to go looking for it. Like, remember putting in a cassette or a CD and, you know, fast forwarding it to the right place. That's how you find the music. And if you don't know something has happened, you may never come to know. And it is coming to you from a small chamber. So, you, you know, even cassettes and CDs, you're with your friends and your friends will do, I like that song, I like that music. But the serendipity isn't really there where you can go out and find a lot of stuff for yourself. Now, in music, the problem was answered, right? Because 
how many of you are actually listening to cassettes or CDs or even radio right now? Most people are on Spotify or Apple Music or Ghana or Savan or wherever. But what essentially happening is that AIs uh, and, and AI algorithms or humans are putting together playlists. And those playlists of, um, of music is, is what you really tend to listen to. Because it seems to know this is what the sort of music you like, and that's the music that will be played for you. So when we set up Editor G, we essentially said that is the direction in which the future is going to be. So sometimes I joke about it when people say, if you have to sum up what you're doing in one line, what would it be? I sometimes jokingly say that, well, you know, perhaps we'll be trying to become the Spotify of video news and information. Because if you actually open the Editor G app, and I would, of course, urge, I don't want to plug the plug any company, but if you are to open that, then the, the direction is clear that we have an AI playlist, right? And that playlist comprises um, 30 stories, all factual, no opinion in any of them, no, is this is good or this is bad, this is, this is what has happened. And that those 30 stories are created to you and put into a playlist. And within a year or so, we're going to allow all of you to create your own playlists and share them with your friends, with your, with your family, with anybody that you like. But the interesting thing is that all of those stories are vetted by an editorial team. So they are all 100% factual. There's no fake news in any of that. And it's unbiased. So as a result of that, you, know, you, you do get just what the facts are. Now, the big question that we had to address, and this has been one of the major sources of debate, and I still don't completely know the answers to that is, it was very easy to build an algorithm which will show people the stories that they want. So I could build a playlist today. My, the Editor G algorithm can today build a playlist which will show you exactly the news stories that you want to watch. And it took a major decision on our part to say, that's not what we're going to do. Because if I'm going to only show you stories that you want to watch, you're not going to be fully informed. You may have never shown any interest in Ukraine in your life till now. And the algorithms, therefore, will not know that you should be interested in Ukraine. But of course, you should be. You should be knowing what's happening. And similarly, maybe there's something happened somewhere in Jharkhand or in Chhattisgarh or Tamil Nadu or Kerala, which in the past, your viewing behavior or your consumption behavior doesn't show that that is an important news story. But we believe you should see it. So what we did is we set up a beautiful AI algorithm that would show people what they wanted. And then we broke it, we smashed it, we tore it up, we said, forget it. And now we have a new system, which is a human machine hybrid, because the humans say these are stories that people should see. And the algorithm says, okay, okay, fine, I've heard you. These are the stories that they would like to see. And somewhere that is combined by all sorts of complicated means, and they you end up getting getting a, a story that combines a, a playlist that combines what you should see and what you shouldn't see. Um, a couple of other things that I just wanted to add before I, before I pipe down is that one or two other major trends are going to be seen, I think. I think this entire era of a pipeline business where I'm a media house and you want to come and consume me at the media house. So I own the consumer. That's called pipeline, right? That's 20th century thinking, 2010, 2015 thinking. I think in the new world, everywhere where you look, Uber has disrupted, you know, taxi services, Airbnb has done that to hotels. Everywhere, the pipeline businesses are going to start disappearing and platforms are going to come in and platforms are going to dominate. So for us, yes, if you get the, the Editor G app and you get that, it's great, it's good, it's a good, good experience out there. But we believe that eventually distribution will happen in a very open manner. So it's a very open architecture. Not anybody can just come in and say, oh, citizen journalism, we are uploading our stories, but we have to check the veracity of that. But anybody can create playlists, anybody can share the playlist and let there be distribution, let there be no walled gardens, let there be an open architecture. That's the way the future is going to be. And I think it's going to be an exciting future. I think eventually, um, once all of these things have been worked out, once all of this, uh, once all the, 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 this is a period of tremendous transformation we're going to see in technology. And once this happens, I think we will eventually hopefully get to a place where you don't have the control of news and information in a few hands because the pipelines are gone. And yet you're not having fake news circulating. You're not having news only coming from one side of an ideological echo chamber or the other side. You are actually having people who are better informed. And when that happens, it'll be a good day, I think, for all of us. Thank you so much for listening to me.